Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another fall clean and decorate with me. Today's video is all things entertaining. I'm going to be sharing with you my fall tablescape to give you some ideas to decorate your table. I'm also going to be sharing some DIYs and how I put this beautiful fall charcuterie board together. Let's get started. Starting with the charcuterie board, I'm going to show you step by step how I put this together just to give you some ideas if you are entertaining this fall. And the first thing I'm doing is laying down some cute little pumpkins. I found these at Walmart. I just gave them a little rinse with some warm soapy water just because they are going to be touching the food. I would have preferred to use real mini pumpkins, but I couldn't find them quite yet. So I'm just laying down three types of cheese and Walmart really has helps me when it comes to putting these boards together because they have these great trays of meat and cheese that come already like sliced or ready to go three different types and they work really well on these boards so i laid down my cheese i laid down my meat then I'm going to be laying down my crackers and I knew for my color palette I wanted to go with a deep blue and like a golden color just to bring in some of those darker hues for fall. So I used those sweet potato crackers by Breton because they have kind of an orange tinge as you can see here. So they flow really nicely with the nuts and then with the golden berries that I added here in the middle. And then I'm just going to go in and add all of the fruit into the little spots and using all of those nice deep blue colors. I'm using some blueberries here and then I'm also going to use some dark wine grapes. I love the color of these grapes. They're so beautiful on a board. So I'm adding those. And then I'm also going to go in and add some sweets. And Walmart has these really great little mini packets of chocolate covered anything at the cache so i grabbed some chocolate covered raisins and some chocolate covered almonds and i also added those to the board just to have something sweet and then i wanted to move the board to where i will have it displayed which is on my island and then i added these wood bowls that i just thrifted and put extra crackers in there and then the final touch was plums these were the star of the show I sliced some, I had some whole just to add that nice deep blue color and also they are super delicious. So added those to the board and I really, really love how this turned out. The pack of pumpkins from Walmart came with those leaves so I just put those under the wood bowls that have extra crackers and I love it so much. I hope that this gave you some inspiration for making a fall charcuterie board. Moving on to the DIY, I'm going to be changing these pumpkins. I found these at Walmart, but they were a little bit scuffed up, so I got them on clearance, which is a little kind of side note. If you find something and it's not perfect, always ask because maybe you can get a discount. So I'm going to be changing these up. I wanted them to be more of a white color and less yellowy cream. So I'm going to be painting them in this paint that I use for everything. It's Benjamin Moore Chantilly Lace. It's the perfect white color. So these pumpkins are going to get a little makeover because they are going to be the star of the show on my table. I love a good DIY and when I'm thrifting or shopping, I often look past the color of something and often think, okay, is it a good shape? Because you can turn anything into something beautiful with paint or spray paint. Across your face, it is written across your face. If you want to go out, we can go out. These pumpkins ended up needing about two coats of paint and I really love how they turned out. If you guys saw part one and part two of my Clean and Decorate With Me series for fall, which if you haven't, I will have linked down below for you guys, but you would have seen that I used a lot of sage green this year for my color palette. So I knew I wanted to paint some of these pumpkins in that same color. And I just mixed in a little bit of cream just because I wanted it more soft and muted. 
and I'm just giving each of these pumpkins a really good coat of paint. They ended up needing two as well. And then I loved this pumpkin that I found at Dollarama. I just loved how real it looked and the shape of it. And I think it look, ended up looking really good in this sage green color. So I'm giving it just two good coats of paint. This paint that I found on Amazon, it's a chalk paint and it really covers very well. So if you like the sage green color, I will have it linked in the description box for you. I also have the same chalk paint in white and it's just a really good quality chalk paint. A little tip I have for you if you're painting pumpkins is to put a paintbrush in the center of the pumpkin where the stem goes. It makes painting them so much easier. The next DIY, we're going to be using these plastic bowls that you can find in Dollar Tree's party section. And as soon as I saw them, I knew I wanted to recreate amber glass looking candle votives. So to Pinterest, I went and I found a mixing solution and I decided to give it a whirl. So for you, I now know the proper me measurements, but while I was doing it, it definitely was trial and error. But what ended up working best was one entire bottle of the small bottle of Mod Podge mixed with the color. So I used a burnt brown paint, um, just a couple squirts of that, and then mixed in with a yellow and a red because amber glass usually has like an orange tinge to it. So I knew I wanted to use a little bit of red and yellow to kind of get that tone. And then to your paint and Mod Podge mixture, you're going to add in about two capfuls of water just to thin it out. And that's what's going to make it kind of look see-through. Um, and it really does turn out very nicely. So all you're going to do is pour your paint into the bowls and then allow the paint to kind of drip all around the edges to cover it fully. And then let it dry upside down so that all the paint, extra paint drips down. And all I did was I kept moving it as it was drying and they really did turn out so pretty. You can add a tea light to it and it does give that amber glass feel, especially when lit at night. Moving on to our next DIY. When I saw this on Pinterest, I knew I wanted to recreate them and we're going to make mini cloches using these wine glasses from the Dollar Tree. And all you're gonna do is take a razor, like a exacto knife, and you're going to heat it up. You can either use the stove or a lighter. And then once it's nice and hot, you're just going to press the blade through the top of the wine glass and it does come right off. Now for the top of the cloche, you can use clear marbles or what I did was use these wood beads just because I wanted to tie in all of the different wood tones that I have in my home. So I'm using this light wood bead and I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then it fits perfectly in that hole on the top and it really does close it off quite nicely. For the bottom of the cloche, you're going to use two of the bottom pieces of the wine glasses and you're just going to take one and turn it upside down and then glue it to the other one. And I'm going to show you again just because I know that this part can be a little bit confusing, but it does create the cutest little base for your cloche. And then to that, I just added a little bit of hot glue and some moss because I wanted to bring in a little bit of a natural element and I do have moss in other parts of my home just to kind of tie it all in. And then I have these cute little mini pumpkins that I picked up at Walmart. So I added them to the center and then I just went around and gave the moss a little bit of a haircut. I put the cloche on top and I cannot believe how cute this is. You could hot glue it, but I wanna be able to reuse it season after season. So I'm just showing you again how I did it. Hey, you'll be alright. 
and now it's time to pull the whole thing together i'm just giving my table a good clean so that i have a nice fresh slate I feel so useless cause I let you down I hope there's some way I can make it alright Cause I know that you deserve much more than this I have this piece of barn board that I keep in the center of the table just to help me when I'm decorating it, just to have an anchor. So I'm gonna be using that today. And the first thing I'm doing is laying down my greenery and I picked up these lamb's ear from Michael's. So I laid that down and then a tip with fake florals is to always like spread them out as much as you can. It really does help them to just look more realistic. So I laid that down and then I went in with the pumpkins and I knew I wanted two white and then I wanted the sage green in the middle. So I play around until they sit nicely. I'm just gonna be adding in some of this eucalyptus that I picked up at Michael's right before I add the sage green pumpkin. And that would be a tip I have for you is when you're styling a table or any space is to work in stages and layers, kind of building as you go. I think that that really does help make it easier and it makes it just look more full when you work slowly in stages. Now just to tie in some of those traditional fall colors and to also flow with the rest of my home, I'm adding in some of these eucalyptus stems that I picked up at Dollarama. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some copper orangey pumpkins as well, just to again, really just bring in some of those warmer tones for fall. Yeah, just give me one more chance. I swear I'll try my best to always be there. Now I'm just going in with a few more of those sage green pumpkins that we painted and then I'm going to add some glass votives and I actually picked these up at Dollar Tree. I could not believe when I found them. I thought they were perfect for this space and again just tying into the rest of my home because I did use a lot of different glass candlesticks and pieces so I added those to the table and then I also added these tea lights that I found at Dollar Tree as well. You could use battery operated ones if you wanted to and I probably will change them out because three kids and candles are probably not the best idea. <laughs> And just to bring in a little bit more of a natural element, I'm adding these little birch pieces that I found at Dollar Tree and some dried orange slices. And if you want to dry your own orange slices, all you have to do is slice them up and put them in a low oven for about two to three hours and they come out really pretty. Now we're setting the table and the first thing I'm laying down are these white charger plates that I found at Dollar Tree and I think that they add such a nice statement piece to the wood table. And then on top of the white charger plates, I'm going to be adding in some glass plates that I also found at Dollar Tree. Now I'm adding one of those DIY cloches to each of the plates and I just love the little pop that it adds to the tablescape. I'm just going in and adding a couple of these copper pumpkins that I spray painted myself and here is the finished look. I absolutely love it. You'll have to let me know down below what you think of it. 
and what your favorite part is but i just love it all i think that it flows really nicely especially with the rest of my house i think it ties everything in and wait till you see it at night Here it is at night. I added in those DIY amber glass votives and I just love how it turned out. If you haven't already, I would love so much if you subscribed and joined our community here on YouTube. My next video is going to be my fall porch decorate with me and also I'm going to be sharing a full home tour of my fall decor so definitely look out for that but thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you guys in my next one bye everyone